Good to know you're still with us. Let's go back to uh, Mohammed now to completely start um, the relaxation of lockdown. Mohammed, please, you have the floor. So, yes. So, we advise that you work with uh, market leaders, association of marketers in Kano, of food commodities, get primary schools that have gates and fences, use them, I mean, decentralize the markets into these communities so that you curtail people from going to central locations where they would have mass uh, interaction and perhaps transmission. And this we have not seen. Instead, we saw the lockdown relaxed. And of course, what do you expect? You would expect people coming together to interact, ex money exchanging hands without proper preventive measures in place, including social distancing or using the face masks. Okay. So this, we thought, in our thought, it's a great, um, uh, uh, I mean, poses a great danger to us, and we're afraid what the turnout is going to be, because the transmission is already at the community level. So we didn't actually expect that kind of uh, um, uh, lockdown at this moment. All right, let me, let me come back to you, uh, Doctor. The, there is um, the effect, the relaxation, rather, of the lockdown commenced today in Lagos, Abuja, and other parts. And we saw that, I mean, the lack of social distancing was evident. I'm sure that is similar um, in Kanu as well. So my question actually is about the appeal by the allied health professionals on Sunday, asking the president to reconsider the decision on the lockdown. With what we've seen on the first day of the relaxation of the lockdown, do you think the president should listen and do the need for when it comes to the relaxation of lockdown? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I, I'm of the opinion that the realization is premature simply because uh, we've not taken a long time experiencing it, but we were very quick at relaxing the lockdown and people will just go about their normal duties and the spread will continue. They would have gradually in a first manner relaxed the lockdown in such a way that people will not troop out from their houses in large number and that is better for us when right. we have some people coming out to do their businesses while majority are at home and then we continue uh, moving forward with right. the lockdown by relaxing it in the first manner. Uh, let, me, let me go back to something you referred to earlier about how in the coming days there will be uh, better testing and all of that. Um, the, the state received some donations from Dangote as well as um, the confirmation that other labs are up. Um, they said they are proposing uh, 400, the donation, um, the centers can provide 400 daily testing. That was the one from Dangote. But there is a promise that they are targeting 1,000 tests starting soon. Do you see the management in Cannes being able to do this? Well, yeah, in fact, even more than that, at least we already have a laboratory in Amino Kano Teaching Hospital that can do 80 in a day. And then we have another one which can do 180 in a day. So that's a total of 260 between the two laboratories in Amino Kano Teaching Hospital. One belonging to AKTS, the other belonging to Bayero University Kano. In fact, I'm speaking to you from the Bayero University Kano's laboratory. Then came Dangote with his donation of 400 capacity laboratory. Uh, that was donated to Kano State yesterday. And I don't know how much of the tests they can do in terms of variety of tests, but in terms of quantity, I believe that they have the capacity to handle the 400. The only thing I do not know is whether it is the rapid test or the real-time PCR test they are planning to conduct. 
that we should have to find out. All right, let, let's come back to you, uh, Mohamed. The country, according to the NCDC uh, boss, has about 3,500 bed spaces. And Canu, from reports um, yesterday, says it requires 5,000 bed space. How ingeniously should they go about this? Well, I think uh, in that line, I would want to commend the uh, state government for some of the proactive steps it has taken in ensuring they have um, isolation centers readily available for uh, isolating uh, COVID-19 patients in Kano State. At the moment, I am aware that we have about um, three major isolation centers. Um, the stadium is there with a significant um, capacity level. The Giginyu Hospital is there. And then you have the, uh, the one out, out sketch of uh, Kano, Konan Dawaki, yes, I'm very sure. So, but again, this, of course, is not um, sufficient enough. What we would expect the government to do is to leverage on some of these um, uh, uh, land owners, I mean, property owners in Kano State, who, of course, can lease out or contribute some of their buildings for isolation centers. We saw at a point where, at, at a point that um, former governor and um, former senator, Senator Rabiu Musa Konkoso, offered one of his, um, I mean, his hospital here in Kano State for isolation center. And uh, we saw reports flying around of the governor, Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, rejecting that particular gesture from the former governor. The reality of that, I don't, I'm not sure. But of course, we need just, just like those kind of ones. And we really need the Kano State government to intensify on owners of properties, most especially those that are abandoned at the moment, to please contribute their own quota in ensuring we have sufficient isolation centers. I think that's just one way that the Kano State government can really mobilize the kind of um, preparatory measures that we would need for isolating patients, because the transmission Honestly, it's at the community trans it's at the community level now, and right. we expect to see the results coming out very soon, just right. like the doctor mentioned earlier. Okay, so in the little time that we have left, I want to come back to you, um, Dr. Isa. What is your take on the Amajiri situation? Most of those moves from Kanu are testing positive. Should there be further returns to state of origin with this reality in mind? Of course, that should have been done much earlier for the children to have been tested and then taken back to their parents, but we wasted a lot of time before that was achieved. However, there is no going back on that. Uh, these children should be returned to their parents even in their current state. However, the only thing is we should ensure that they are tested and as they get back to their parents' houses, they should be asked to isolate or the parents should isolate them as far as they can. Because very soon, we have to learn how to stay with COVID-19 positive patients, even in our homes. Because the situation is so rampant that no amount of uh, isolation centers can take the number of positive cases. At least if they are not symptomatic, uh, they can be managed at home only that they should keep a, keep a distance between them and other members of the family so that they won't transmit uh, the disease to them. But at least they are not sick, they can manage at home. All right, Doctor, uh, thank you very much uh, for your thoughts on the program tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, uh, Mr. Mohamed Bello, thank you also for your time with us. It's my pleasure. To take care and be safe. We'll go on a short break and when we come back, the parents of Leah Sharibu have a message for the federal government. We'll be right back. <laughs>